I guess I would have to say that I'm a late bloomer where dolphins are concerned. I did not grow up loving them from birth. I actually found dolphins later in life when I was in college. Growing up, I was a science geek. I loved science, I loved school. Most definitely, I loved school. And I loved animals and the oceans. I just didn't know how to pull all that together into a career. The study of dolphin communication to me is kind of like putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle that's continually ongoing, but that you've lost the box. So you don't know what the actual final picture or the final view of the puzzle that you're putting together will be. Wow, they're around a lot, mm -hmm. I think the, the way to sum up the bulk of what I've learned about dolphins over the years is that they are a complex social animal which have a variety of different behaviors and sounds and postures and gestures that they use to communicate. Over the years I've decided that dolphins don't really have a language like English or Japanese or Spanish, but I do believe that they have a vocabulary that includes all of these gestures and postures and their sounds and different behaviors to exchange information. Most people are familiar with the name Jacques Cousteau. At one point in his career, he mentioned about the sea being very silent, but it's not. If you spend some time underwater, you realize that it's actually a very noisy place. There's a lot of sounds from animals or from man-made sounds. But specifically, when you focus into dolphin sounds, they have two broad categories of sounds they make. They make pure tone or whistle sounds, and they make click sounds. They use those sounds when they're interacting, when they're communicating with one another. Specifically, the whistles or different types of pure tone sounds are used when they're socializing, when they're hanging out, maybe when they're communicating over distances. When we study dolphin communication, we don't just study the sounds that they make because dolphins can communicate using a variety of other signals. They're very tactile individuals. They'll come into contact with one another. They'll rub their bodies all over one another. Specifically, what we've been focusing on is how dolphins will use their pectoral fins to exchange contact with one another. When two dolphins come together after having been separated for a period of time or a short distance, oftentimes they'll come together and they'll rub pectoral fin to pectoral fin, or they'll rub their pectoral fin against the body of another individual. This is used maybe to strengthen social bonds between individuals. Maybe they want to make sure they're still on the same team when they're fighting, or maybe they just want to make sure the other individual is there with them when they're hanging out or swimming. We've seen dolphins be aggressive with one another. We've seen them be aggressive with one another on a one-to-one -one basis where they'll jaw clap or, or bite or chase one another. We've also seen groups of individuals that will form pairs or triplets or groups of four dolphins all sort of in this big gang war going after each other, fighting and fighting and fighting. And sometimes that fighting will, will stop and they'll be calm, but then it'll resume up again after a couple of minutes. And they're very loud and noisy and there's a lot of different aggressive activity, jaw clapping and biting, chasing and raking one another. And we've seen this in the spotted dolphins and in the bottlenose dolphins. I'm not really sure why people have such an affinity for dolphins, but wherever you go, with very few exceptions, people just are enamored of dolphins.